Hi there team and welcome to an update on the geologic situation we have in Kilauea, the volcano there on the Big Island of Hawaii. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey and today is February 2nd. It is about 4.40 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and there's been some significant developments from the USGS some earthquakes to look at and some other data and also I think I think a pretty significant development in this magmatic and earthquake activity in Kilauea so we're going to work our way through some of the USGS data and then also look at how these earthquakes have progressed over the last few days before at the end we'll talk a little bit about what all this activity might mean and where it might actually what it might actually lead to so let's go ahead and start with the USGS update so this is the update for today February 2nd this was 10.08 in the morning Hawaii Standard Time notice that we still have the uh, Kilauea listed at status orange or a volcanic alert of watch um, given the amount of earthquakes and some of the other data and activity that took place over the last few days um, so let's just go through this a little bit piece by piece. So full stop here, Kilauea is not erupting. Seismicity along the Kauai Fault System southwest of the summit remains elevated. So just for a little bit of context there, let me show you where that fault system is. So here's the Kilauea Summit Caldera. We have the East Rift Zone, which extends off to the east, the South Rift Zone here. And we're seeing a lot of earthquake activity, mostly along the west side of these faults and other areas as well, not just exactly on these faults, but in this general vicinity. Uh, going back to the update, uh, deformation patterns in Kilauea summit show signs of deflation. So the idea there is that the magma body that was underneath Kilauea summit where it had been feeding lava over the past few months and even a few years, last few years for sure, some of that magma has actually started to move into the southwest side of the volcano and so that's caused the summit area to deflate a little bit or to move downwards. The intrusion of magma southwest of Kilauea's summit remains active and an eruption could occur in the future with little warning. So some of their observations, uh, they had seismicity five to seven miles southwest of the caldera in the vicinity of Pu'u Kua'e, that's one of the hills or volcanoes out there, and about 20 to 35 earthquakes per hour as of this morning. Earthquakes in the summit area were at a much lower rate of less than 10 per hour. Earthquake depths are consistently one to four kilometers down, so less than a half mile to two and a half miles if you want to use English units uh, below the surface, and the magnitudes are uh, a little over two to less than one for the most part. In total, 63 earthquakes have been recorded in the Caldera region over the past 24 hours, and 504 earthquakes have been recorded uh, along the Kauai Fault System, again to the southwest and south of the summit caldera. Over the past days, tilt meters have recorded uh, 40 microradians of change consistent with deflation as magma moves into the region southwest. So that's what we talked about. Um, GPS instruments have recorded up to 8 inches of motion at stations around the southwest rift zone consistent with magma moving into a dike-like body in the region. So this I think is maybe the one of the bigger things, at least this was one of the more noteworthy things in the USGS update that really caught my attention. So the GPS instrument data along with the earthquake data is indicating and suggesting that there's actually a dike-like body of magma in the subsurface. And if you've been following my Iceland updates, we saw this on November 10th when the magma moved from out from the part of the magma anyway, moved out from underneath the power plant region and moved off to the east to form this uh, narrow zone, sort of a, again what we call a tabular body of magma that we call a dike. And so this is really uh, interesting. Dikes are typically conduits that carry magma to the surface when there's an eruption. Now just because we have a dike or a dike-like magma body that's forming here beneath Kilauea, that's not necessarily uh, a, a slam dunk that we're going to have an eruption. It's suggestive of an eruption, but there's a still a just as good a chance that we could have that magma body intrude, stay in the subsurface, 
and then if there is an eruption it's you know weeks or months or who knows when from now and that's what we saw again in Iceland November 10th we saw a dike of magma form in the subsurface we didn't see it but we inferred that um, but that actually didn't even erupt so uh, that's I think one of the bigger takeaways from today's USGS update uh, gas emissions not really an issue right now because we don't have that magma close to the surface and an eruption hasn't happened and then this final paragraph here which is also pretty important patterns of earthquakes and ground deformation continue to indicate that magma is moving beneath the surface southwest of the summit along the Kauai fault zone the Kauai fault system which appears as low cliffs or scarps on the surface connects the east and southwest rift zones south of the caldera at the time of this report, activity remains elevated. Periods of increased earthquake activity and rates of ground deformation can be expected to continue in this region. Lots going on. Based on past historical activity, this event is much more likely to continue as an intrusion. Fix my microphone here. But there is still a possibility of it ending in an eruption. So still a good chance, whatever that is, that this thing doesn't actually culminate in an actual surface eruption, but that's still a distinct possibility. So let's look at some of this data then that's led to this update here from the USGS, looking first at some of the um, earthquake data. So here's Mauna Loa on the left, here's the Kilauea summit area here on the right. If we zoom in a little bit here, we can look at the number of earthquakes we've had in the past 24 hours and then a, there's a total over here 315 so about 315 earthquakes in the last 24 hours the ones that are in red are within the past hour um, and so that shows a clear sign of where these earthquakes are occurring you can see they're starting to develop maybe a little bit more of a linear trend uh, over time and, and I don't know exactly where the USGS has placed the dike in three-dimensional space but I would guess it's somewhere uh, in this region here. Uh, if we look at the past seven days, so the past week or so, you can see how elevated the seismicity was in the area. And so this again is mostly over the last two, three days um, around Kilauea. So a very strong seismic swarm uh, that's occurred over time there. And what I also want to do is show you how these earthquakes have moved and evolved with each passing day. There actually is a, a pattern and a trend there as well. Um, similar map, this map also shows some of the past lava flows. So you can see all, all those in color out here out in the East Rift Zone. And then we're mainly focused here uh, in the Southwest Rift Zone where we know we've had eruptions in the past, most recently in 1974. Let me show you on Google Earth first uh, where these earthquakes are sort of not just in space but also in terms of their time component and so what we'll see here I'll let this run a couple times and we'll just kind of observe and and watch together so you can see the earthquake starting here let me go ahead and pause that real quick so we're at about you can see the sliding bar up here on the left it's kind of small but we're on right here we're at January 28th so let me pull it back a little bit this starts about a week or so ago on the 26th what day was the 26th yeah that was last Friday so this shows a week or so worth of earthquake activity in and around uh, Kilauea so again starting about last Friday or Saturday uh, here are the earthquakes near the summit area uh, and then as we get into the 29th, you can see those moving somewhat down the rift. Here we are the 30th, and then here comes the 31st when things really pick up. So you can see that intense swarm of earthquakes. Now we're into February 1st, and then into the 2nd. Uh, let's do that again, and let me let me slow it down just a little bit. It, it kind of comes fast and furious there, so maybe this will help it make a little bit more sense. But let's watch that one more time. Probably hard to see this very small number up here, but basically it's showing you those earthquakes. It's, it's populating those earthquakes on Google Earth. Um, and then after it leaves them there for a few seconds in our time, they, they disappear. But it does show you, I think nicely, the trend in the seismicity from these clusters near the summit, just south of the caldera, um, starting to work their way down the rift zone. So we're still getting them near the summit as maybe magma is being injected into this side of the volcano. But then they really pick up here on the 31st going into the February 1st yesterday and then finally into today February 2nd 
uh, with these last clusters of earthquakes here. Um, so I think there is a distinct southwestward progression of the earthquake pattern that we've seen here. Um, and that's, again, highly suggestive of the magma moving its way into fractures and cracks down into the southwest rift zone, possibly widening cracks, breaking rock. That's what's generating the seismicity. Um, and that's the pattern we see so far. What will be interesting is in the next few days, um, you know, does it does it erupt uh, in the near term, in which case you'd expect the eruption to take some place up here where these earthquakes are occurring? Or do we see this seismic pattern continue with earthquakes increasing in frequency and number as we come even further down to the southwest along that rift zone? Um, and that may be indicative of an eruption that may or may not take place further down the rift zone down into this region. So pretty interesting, um, but I thought that was a fun way to look at the data that it's not just the, the clusters um, as a snapshot, but you really need to almost see those animated day by day to really see the progression uh, and the seismicity and what that might reflect. Um, let's see, let's look at some of the, well, here's another way to look at it. This is just a different uh, database here. So let's see if this one is helpful as well. So here is the uh, caldera at Kilauea. The l smaller nested caldera is Halemaumau. Um, here's the east rift zone taking off this way. And then the south rift zone, which is just parallel to Highway 11 and just runs a little bit east of it here. So this is a similar loop. We're going to start this one though on the 29th. So that's just, uh, what, four or five days ago. Uh, what day was that? Monday. So this will start Monday and run through today on Friday. But you'll see a similar thing where the earthquakes will pop up. And let's see if we see that same progression from earthquakes near the summit region, south of the caldera, and then some of those starting to spread and push further down the rift zone. So here we are, the 29th. Now we're on the 30th of January. Now we're on the 31st. This should really get us going. Yep, there you go. Earthquakes increasing. Now we're going into February 1st, coming further down the rift zone. And then finally, February 2nd today and the earthquakes we have up to this point here. So you can see there was a definite progression of those quakes down to the southwest. And so um, that's that's the that's the trend we're seeing there. And we'll just have to see what you know where this goes. Does it continue that trend to the southwest or does this thing Maybe the earthquakes continue to cluster in one of these areas uh, that's already formed, and maybe that results in eruption. Maybe things start to quiet down and the intrusion is over. Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, let's look at some of the monitoring data for Kilauea, and let's go ahead and update that so we've got like the most up-to-date information. So starting with this map here, um, it's a little hard to see everything, but here's the east rift zone of Kilauea, the summit caldera region is hidden beneath all these earthquakes here, a little crazy. And then we can see the southwest rift zone trend this way. The color of the dot represents the depth and the size of the dot represents the magnitude. And then the next graph is gonna show us a cross section uh, across this area. So it plots depth, how deep the earthquakes are, and then a west to east cross section. So you can notice over here in the east rift zone, we're just hardly seeing any earthquakes at all. It's pretty quiet over there, but in the caldera and southwest rift zone region, region, that's where a lot of the earthquakes have been clustering. That's where the activity is at. The blue cluster down here is the Pahala earthquakes. Uh, that's linked to maybe a deeper magma source uh, in that area. If we look at the total number of quakes over the last, I guess, uh, week or so, you can see that a week ago, last Friday, we had very few earthquakes, well under 100. And then you can see that ramp up. So these are little bar graphs. So between, um, I guess, Sunday or so, all the way to the 31st, we had maybe 250 or so to 400 quakes per day. And then that really ramped up to over 700 quakes per day on the 31st, uh, darn near 700 yesterday on February 1st. And today, of course, is not over, especially in Hawaii, where they're a good four or five hours behind my time zone. And so I wouldn't be surprised if this this last bar on the graph here ends up being, you know, at least 600, maybe six to 700 by the time we get to midnight tonight and it turns over into the next day. Uh, another graph here showing earthquakes plotted 
in terms of their depth, but earthquakes uh, in terms of date. So back again a week ago, very few earthquakes. Then things really started to pop and ramp up a little bit uh, between the 27th and 28th. And then it really ramped up another level on and about the 31st. You can see a, a much bigger quake, a four right there. And then just these incredible uh, larger and much more frequent earthquakes, these shallow quakes uh, from the 31st up till now. And this, of course, it, combined with some other data is what prompted the USGS to increase Kilauea's status level to orange or to a watch. Um, this is the tilt meter or the, the, it's the tilt meter up near the summit of Kilauea. And so this, this is a very sensitive instrument that detects even the slightest tilt or movement of the land surface. You can see the blue line there is pretty stable until those earthquakes really get ramped up on the 31st. And then the tilt is what we call a deflationary trend. It's actually tilting down. And presumably this is indicative of magma that was at the summit in the summit region and stable starting to move out of the summit region and propagate into the southwest part of the volcano. Uh, it looks like it's stabilized a bit over the last day or so. Um, so that might indicate there was a certain volume of magma that moved off or there's some other factors that could play in there. Uh, so we'll have to see how that plays out moving forward. Um, but the dike forming I thought was like the maybe the, the biggest um, bit of news that came out of the USGS today along with the the intensity of, of the earthquakes which was ongoing and if we're going to see anything take place at Kilauea if you wanted to kind of watch for a uh, possible eruption they, they have a series of webcams that you can go into the HBO Hawaii Volcano Observatory uh, go to webcams and uh, and then this one here in the upper southwest rift zone is probably the one that would be best situated to capture any sort of uh, eruption that might take place. It might the, the eruption might be out of the frame, um, but if there's a camera that's ready to, to catch this, this is probably the best one. Um, so we'll have to see how things go there. So um, what's the big takeaway here? Well, it's, it's basically a wait and see type of thing. Uh, we'll have to see where this goes. The good news, of course, is we have this largely uninhabited area that's all within the National Park. There's no infrastructure. Highway 11 is uphill and right on the, the buttress, the flank, if you will, the border between uh, Mount Aloha and Kilauea. So that highway should be not impacted at all if there is an eruption. Um, yeah, and this is just National Park area, part of the what's called the Ka'u Desert. I did make a mistake that I want to correct in my update yesterday. Um, well, maybe not much, maybe not a mistake per se, but uh, it was a bit misleading, and I've got a little bit better information. As I put these together, I'll always try to put together the best available data, give you my uh, best analysis. Um, on things as they take place. But of course, I'm going to make mistakes. And of course, as I become aware of those mistakes, I'll correct those as best I can. So I talked about how dry this area is, this desert region. And I said it was mainly due to it, this region being on the southwest side of the volcano. So it was in the rain shadow, just like we, we have a similar rain shadow to some degree um, around Mount Aloha and some of the other volcanoes on the Big Island. But the real reason, or, the, or I expose the more controlling factor in why this area is so desolate and has such scarce vegetation, actually has to do with the fact that Kilauea's summit region has been quite active for decades, centuries, um, and the trade winds blow a lot of those volcanic gases into this region and so when those sulfur dioxides and some of those volcanic gases mixed with the the moisture laden air it produces aerosols and, and a mist uh, and it creates conditions that are quite uh, inhospitable for the plants that try to grow there so it's really hard on the plants because there's this acidic vog like a volcanic fog and sometimes a slightly acidic rain that can fall in the region and so that's probably the dominant reason why this area is is a bit of a desert and is is so um, you know there's just not a lot of vegetation there so hopefully that makes sense and you can sort of see again this sort of swath here that just 
it follows the dominant trade wind patterns here to the southwest. So just thought I'd mention that. Uh, where this thing might erupt, if it were to erupt, is again anyone's guess. But given that we don't have magma in the lava lake here at Halimauma'u in the crater, um, and the magma has moved out of that area, presumably, or at least some of it, into the southwest rift zone region, if there were to be an eruption, and also given the seismic signals that we saw moving down the rift, it seems like a, the most likely eruption would be you know, part way down the rift, maybe like mid rift about here, about where we last saw those earthquakes popping up, maybe near these hills here. Um, if we're going to see an eruption further down the rift zone in this region, we'd expect to see more of those earthquakes kind of marching down the, the southwest rift zone over the next few days. And that might culminate in an eruption uh, then that will head down to the coast. Again, no danger to infrastructure here. This town is totally safe and out of harm's way, as is the highway. So these lava flows should erupt mostly just to the east of this orange line I've drawn here. And most of those will head uh, more or less due south or southeast-ish towards the coastline. So. So we'll just wait and see. Um, I'll try to keep you updated as things progress. I'm trying to monitor Kilauea, trying to monitor Iceland in addition to my real job and teaching classes and grading and uh, helping students out. But I'll try to juggle those three things as best I can, provide updates when I can. I appreciate your support, uh, your encouragement, and your enthusiasm for learning with me. This really is just fun to watch some of these geologic processes play out and learn from them, learn from the USGS and some of the experts and, and try to piece this all together and uh, learn as much as we can. So thanks so much for joining me and we'll see you next time. Take care.